Hello everyone, welcome back to Five Days a Stranger. A game with an excellent story, incredibly inconsistent volume levels, and frustratingly traditional adventure game puzzles, which is exactly why I've started to use a walkthrough more and more. Including, well, just right now. The thought of coming back to this game and just clicking on everything randomly, hoping for something to happen was... not very conducive to making me want to play. So I believe I need to do a bunch of stuff in the library. This is the library, right? Yes. Okay, uh, I think I need to click more books. So let's do some pixel hunting. Let's click all the books. Alright. I can't think of a use. Okay. Just gotta click on all the different colors, I believe. Yellow, gray, green. And these appear to be the exact same color as the uh, book stands at the end. Camouflage books. Or camouflage stands, depending on how you look at it. Did I just say stands? Ah, whatever. Hmm. Wait, what is that? I don't want that nasty thing. What is that? Ew, it's a sun-bleached skull. That is nasty. Alright, I might be... Oh, no, I think... Okay, yeah, that's what I needed. Okay, let's give that a read. Uh, use... Wait, what did I just do? How did I just read that? I think I've read enough to have some idea of what's going on here. If there's a ghost in this place, there must be some connection to the disappearance of Sir Roderick and Matthew Defoe. Was Matthew schizophrenic, or something? Did Sir Roderick kill him and disappear to avoid the law? It's odd that neither of their bodies were ever found. If I could find Matthew's body, perhaps I can get to the bottom of this. Maybe there's a book or something in the library that could help me. Okay, I don't even know how I just read this. Do I just right-click it? Okay, I guess I just right-click it. I don't know. It's got a really old interface, to say the least. A History of the Defoe Family, Volume 7. Roderick Defoe, later Sir Roderick Defoe, is probably the most famous of the lineage. Using a lot of the inheritance he attained when his parents died suddenly, he embarked on a series of adventures throughout the globe, earning quite a reputation as a colonial explorer. He retired from adventuring at the age of 40 when he met his future bride, Belinda Rothman, and fell instantly in love. He built a luxury manor in the English countryside, and the couple moved in as soon as work was complete. By all accounts, the couple were deliriously happy, which is what made Belinda's sudden death, while giving birth to their only son, Matthew, all the more tragic. Sir Roderick was in mourning for a long time, leaving the upbringing of Matthew in the hands of numerous nannies and tutors. When he finally did start taking an interest in his son, he was known to be bitterly disappointed as his son rejected the idea of joining the army, preferring to pursue the art and literature. As Matthew neared the age of 15, however, he and his father seemed to grow closer. They didn't always see eye to eye, but they seemed to understand each other and offer unconditional love. And then, on Matthew's 15th birthday, he and Roderick disappeared. A servant found bloodstains in one of the rooms, but no bodies were found. The fate of Sir Roderick and his wayward son remains a mystery to this day. The first of many mysterious disappearances connected to the Defoe line and the family house. Never to be seen again. Okay, let's check out more books. Which one do I need? <laughs> Here we go. Why not? I could certainly do with a laugh. <laughs> Wait, what? Is it a book of jokes or something? It's a book on white magic. Finding a person from their possession. Tie the possession in question to a stick 
and dip it in salt. Next, wave it over the place where the subject sleeps. When you hold it in front of you, the object should now indicate in which direction the owner lies. Oh. Well, I guess now I have a use for the bag of salt. I was wondering what the heck that was going to be about. <laughs> There's the weird audio levels again. Got super quiet, now it just got loud again. <laughs> bag of salt, here we come. Alright, I'm trying to find Matthew, and this is his bear. It's supposed to be attached to a piece of stick, right? Uh, use... There? There's no way to attach the bear to the stick. Okay, uh, cord. You use the bear on the cord. A little macabre, perhaps, but never mind. Okay. <laughs> it's like the bear is in a noose. There we go. And dip it in salt, right? And then it said, what? Put it over the place where they sleep? Next, wave it over the place where the subject sleeps. Okay. Back upstairs. Oh my god, no. I don't want to read that. Go go away. There we go. That's not where I meant to go. I think I unlocked it from the inside, right? So I don't have to go through the window again. Yeah, okay. Let's give this a shot. I guess that'll do. Oh, no, I don't want to read that. Uh, is it done? Did it work? <laughs> A salty bear plus stick. That just sounds awesome, doesn't it? A salty bear. Okay, I don't understand. What did that actually do? It doesn't appear to have accomplished anything. When you hold it in front of you, the object should now indicate in which direction the owner lies. Okay. How do I hold it in front of me? What does that mean? I don't want to use it on myself. Okay. It seems to be indicating downwards. Okay. It seems to be indicating to my left. To my left. I'm guessing it's probably out in the yard. Either it's not working properly, or it's pointing straight downwards. What the hell? Can I select the floor? Can I bust up the tiles? Doesn't seem so. Let's go outside. It seems to be indicating to my left. Huh. Alright, well, let's try in here. Southeast. Oh, is this a dirt... Gr I just realized, is this a dirt ground? Can I dig this up? East. I just realized I should probably save, shouldn't I? You can die in this game, apparently. It says so in the readme. 
to the south. Okay. Right here? North. No, oh, God, I don't want to read that. Go away. It's pointing straight down. Okay, uh, do I have a shovel? No, but I do have a pickaxe. Okay. Where's the area? There's the area. That doesn't work. Well, go screw yourself. Alright, do I use the bear on the area? No. Do I use my hands on the area? Apparently not. I don't think I use a saw or some lockpicks. That's not gonna help. Do I have access to a shovel? Didn't I have a shovel at some point? Or no, it was the metal detector that I had that disappeared. Okay. But... Well... This seems to be the area of the ground that Matthew Defoe... The Matthew Defoe detector was pointing at. Yep. That... That much is true. Now what? Is the question. Can I talk to it? Whoa. What the... Oh. Okay, that worked. Matthew Defoe, I presume. Does Sir Roderick keep him down here? No. He can't have done. There have been mention of it in one of the books I read. So... Hold on. I don't think that's Matthew's hand. What? Oh, God. There's another corpse down here. It looks like the body of a much older man. You know, I have a feeling this is Sir Roderick. Judging by the ribs, he was killed by a large stabbing weapon. But by whom? What was that? It sounded like it come, came from the other side of the house. Oh shit. Oh shit. Now's the time to save. They did both go missing, and apparently but they both uh they both went missing together. Like they ended up in the same spot. I have a feeling I'm about to need to use that gun. Uh, hey, did you hear that sound? Hello, Philip. Uh-huh. Okay, catch you later, bro. I'm just gonna go investigate the smashing sound. That might be somebody being murdered. Bye. Alright, how upstairs was it? Let's try over here first. That's the other mystery of the game. Oh. There's nobody in here. How, how did it fall? Idle. The bell jar has been knocked over and smashed. Looks like the idol is undamaged. This really is a horrendously ugly little wooden idol. Hang on. What are these little stains? Father, why? What the hell? Oh god, my head. What... What the hell happened last night? I remember... Oh god. Philip. Did I kill Philip? I don't remember anything. Last thing I remember is putting my hand on... That idol. I've got to warn the others. God, is this a dream? I hope it's a dream. What have I got on me? 
<laughs> I've got the teddy bear and my uh, book of white magic. Okay, anything in here? No. It's locked. God knows where they found the key. Shit, they took my lockpicks too. Bastards. Okay. Workbench, workbench, cupboard. There's nothing in there, right? Or is there? Doesn't appear so. Can open and close it, but there's apparently nothing inside. Alright, can I smash the window or something? It's stuck shut. I can see my car from here. Hello? Is there anyone out there? Quiet. Simone? Is that you? Yes. I'm keeping guard. Why? Shut up. You killed Philip. Don't even try to deny it. I did? Don't play games with me. I'm keeping guard here until the police get into the grounds. Then I'm handing you over. Okay, apparently they think I murdered someone. Maybe I did. But if I did murder somebody, it wasn't under my own control. Right, well, even if I escaped, they'd still be out there. Might need to talk my way out of this one. I don't exactly have any tools to escape, either. And I'm not sure I can make much of the teddy bear on a workbench. Especially with no tools. So, yeah. I guess I'll keep talking. Simone? What do you want now? <laughs> the first thing I'm going to ask is, what have you done with my tie? It was Jim's idea. We took it off you so you wouldn't hang yourself. Why wouldn't you want me to hang myself if I'm such a cold-blooded killer? Jim still seems to think you might somehow be innocent. That boy really admired you, you know? I'm filled with shame. I'm sure. Where's Jim? Why do you want to know? So you can track him down and kill him? <sighs> well, Jim's going to be my greatest ally, obviously. He's the only one that seems to still believe in me. Hmm. How should I play this? Um... He could be in terrible danger. I know. Until the police have you handcuffed, we all are. Alright, that didn't work. What makes you think I killed Philip anyway? Oh, well, let me see. First, Jim and I are attacked by some huge guy in a welding mask and apron with a machete, but managed to get away. Then we come into the kitchen and find a huge guy in a welding mask and apron unconscious next to Philip's corpse. And when we took the mask off, lo and behold, it's you. Look, you've got it all wrong. Oh, really? Well, then, let's hear your version. Let's see. <laughs> How can I even explain it? I don't even know what actually happened. I touched the idol and then I woke up here. I was possessed by a ghost. Well, we already, I already know she doesn't believe in spirits or anything like that, right? She said it was... Didn't she say it was bullshit and... Something like that, so I'm pretty sure she wouldn't buy it. Um, <laughs> Philip tried to kill me first. How does that explain the fact that I was in a freaking welding mask and a, an apron? It's like, yeah, he tried to kill me, so I put on my murderer's get-up. <laughs> and attacked him? What the hell? None of these seem like good options, but I guess the first one is most likely. The real killer tricked me. He made me put on his mask and apron. When he attacked me and Jim, he was wearing a gray pinstripe suit. I suppose you lent it to him for the, for the weekend? Okay, this is not getting anywhere. 
argue that you're making a terrible mistake. That's also not going to go anywhere. Oh, am I? Why is that? <laughs> Haven't you ever watched a horror movie? Actually, it's true. There's no way I'm the killer. Just based on horror movie logic. It's gotta be... There's gotta be a twist, you know? A big twist. It's too easy for me to be the killer. The real killer's still on the loose. Oh, sure. I suppose they knocked you out. Dressed you in their clothes. Put the machete in your hand. And cleverly hid while we discovered you. Something like that? Oh, please. Fuck! But... But... But Teddy... But what about Teddy? Or white magic? What about Teddy and white magic? Ooh. White Teddy. White Teddy magic. Okay. Let's try a couple different options. He knows that I'm innocent. Does he? You almost hacked him to pieces with a machete. I think you'll have taken that into consideration. Alright, I guess I'm going to have to exhaust all of my options here. If you left him alone, he's already dead. Shut up. The real killer's still out there. He could be creeping up on you even as we speak. I said shut up. Right, so that doesn't work. Making a mistake. <sighs> Haven't you ever watched a horror movie? There's always someone who gets wrongfully accused of the killings. And whoever does the accusing is destined to be horribly murdered next. What the hell kind of fantasy world are you living in? You're the killer. That's a proven fact. There's no way of denying it. Okay, the police will never get in here. This house will only let people in one by one. And even if an officer does get inside, they can't leave. Will you shut up about your stupid haunted house theory? One good, solid battering ram to the front door, they can come in and go as they please. Okay. Well, if I already tried the first one. I was possessed by a ghost. Oh, now that impresses me. Did you think of that all by yourself? It's the truth, I swear. Shut up. Just shut up. Okay, oh, this actually might work. Mm hmm. <laughs> it possessed me just like it did when I killed AJ. I don't even know if I killed AJ, and I certainly wouldn't want to admit that. It's either basement or go touch the idol. Uh, uh, do I actually want her to touch the idol? If I touched it, and then I murdered someone, and woke up... Later... Might the same thing happen to her? Eh. Go give it a go, Simone. What a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Go and check some stupid idol, leaving you conveniently unguarded. Maybe I'll save that for plan B. <sighs> Alright. So I think it's in here. Uh, have a look at the basement. There's two corpses down there, Sir Roderick and Matthew Defoe. And take a look through those books I was carrying. There's a ghost here, I swear. Trilby, I'm not going to let you drag me into your lunatic fantasy. Just keep your mouth shut. <clears throat> God damn it. This is kind of funny, but it's also like super classical adventure game sort of dialogue design that I absolutely loathe. 
so unnatural to be going through the same dialogue and skipping it again and again. Okay. It possessed me, just like it did when I killed AJ. What are you talking about now? The ghost. It talks to me late at night, when no one else can hear. Trying to make me do things. Evil things. Shut up. It never leaves me alone. I can't sleep. Then I have the blackouts. I'll wake up with blood all over me in an unfamiliar place. It's happened so many times now, I can't count them. Shut up. Kill AJ. Kill Philip. Kill everyone. It wouldn't leave me alone. I'm warning you. Hmm. I, I don't even know which option. Um, I still think I can get rid of the voice with your help. M my help? If you'll, just let me, if you'll just let me out of here, you can help me exercise it. There's probably some stuff in the library about... No way. You really think I'm stupid. There's no ghost, it's just you. You and your insanity. The sooner the police get here, the better. Wonderful, I get to go through that all again. It's talking to me right now. It's saying, kill the bitch. You can break the window, kill the rotten bitch. Shut up, keep away from me. Oh, that worked well. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm delirious with guilt most of the time. I can see the face of every poor innocent I've killed every time I close my eyes. Most evenings I cry so hard I vomit. Several times. Sometimes I just want this nightmare to end. If death came right now, I'd welcome it. Oh god. Simone, let me have my tie back. Your tie? Please? Oh, to hell with it. Have it, you psycho. Nope, nope, no, that's not how you do it. There we go. I'll just slip it on. And here's my emergency lockpick. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. See, this demonstrates the importance of forethought. Yes, it does. Emergency lockpick. Thing is, though, isn't she going to, if not hear it, certainly n immediately notice as soon as I open it? And I'm assuming she has some sort of a weapon, and I don't. So... Yeah. There's nothing else I can do. Here we go. Unlocked. Hi. Whoa. Where's Simone got to now? I've got to get her and Jim to believe me about the idol. What the hell? She was so adamant about staying out there to protect me. Where did she go? That's... Suspicious. Oh, God. He was a bit of a douchebag, but he didn't deserve to be murdered. It's Philip. Someone has run him through with a machete. The worst part of it is, that someone was probably me. I really would rather not touch him. It is never wise to disturb the sleep of the dead. Poor old, poor, poor old Sir Roderick Defoe. Probably never stood a chance. Poor young Matthew Defoe, cut down cruelly in his prime by something.
Whoa, what the hell is up with that painting? Hold on. What the fuck? That doesn't look right. It's a portrait of a skeleton in a bloodstained safari suit. The plaque reads, Sir Roderick Defoe. What the hell happened to it? I don't want it. It kind of freaks me out. This isn't... Is this another dream? I'm feeling like I should save a lot more. Let's see if the idol is still there. It's been put back in the table. Looks like someone's been doing a little tidying up. <laughs> Do I want to touch it? <laughs> no. What about the weapon? Can I take it with me? I don't think I can take it outside, can I? No, okay. But if I do have to run away from somebody, this is exactly where I'm gonna go. To the gun. I'm guessing that's what I'm gonna have to do. I mean, there's a freaking gun there, I'm probably gonna have to use it. I think that's a safe bet. Hello? There's not that many places they could be. This is Matthew Defoe's room. Okay. No one in here, either. What the hell? Where the hell is everyone? Whoa. Trilby. Simone, before you say anything... I know you didn't really kill Philip or AJ. You do? I figured you were lying to get me away from the shed. I saw him again. Who? The killer. The guy in the welding mask. I spotted him downstairs, but he didn't see me. And I can't find Jim anywhere. Simone, you have to listen to me. The ghost. Oh, shut up about your ghost. This isn't a ghost, it's a regular flesh and blood psycho. Oh, God. Speak of the devil. Do something. Uh. What the fuck do I do? <laughs> I have the faintest clue what to do. <laughs> I was thinking go for the I was thinking go for the gun, but um yeah, that's not gonna happen in the bathroom with only one exit. Uh a shower curtain, um I have a teddy bear and a book of white magic on me. That's not gonna work. Huh. Looking around me. Can I pull the rug out from under their feet? <laughs> can I do that? I wonder. I mean, there's nothing I can pick up and, like, use as a weapon. So I think I need to trip them. Okay. Hold on. Time to save. Uh, yes, I think I can. Hold on. Uh, feet. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm in hands, not feet. Oh my god, Jim. Day five. So everybody keeps showing up as the killer. It was, uh, how is he? He's awake, he's fine. Doesn't remember anything, just like I didn't. Look, I only sort of half believe this possession thing right now. But in the absence of a better suggestion, I guess I'm going along with it. Have you been over, uh, going over those books I was carrying? Yeah, and some, and some texts on the occult. Apparently, if we want to destroy this thing, we have to get the spirit back to its old body. 
That'll make it quasi-mortal. It'll still be dangerous, but not unkillable. We have to find the body first. And to do that, we have to know who the ghost is. I've been thinking about this, and I have a fairly workable theory. Yes, I've got a couple of ideas about it myself. Right, well, the ghost is something to do with the disappearance of Roderick and Matthew Defoe, right? The deaths and disappearances all started after that. Agreed. So, what do you think? Hmm. I wonder if this actually affects, like, the ending. Or can I just get a wrong answer? And if I got a wrong answer, what would happen? Hmm. I don't think Sir Roderick's wife died naturally. Do I have any reason to believe that? His wife died in, nat in uh, childbirth, right? And that's kind of why, at least one of the reasons, he hates his son. I hope I'm remembering that correctly. I think Sir Roderick had more than one son. Do I have any reason to believe that? Sir Roderick obviously killed Matthew and disappeared. No. Sir Roderick's the one next to him. Okay, well, this one's definitely not right, and these I just don't know. So, actually, I'd rather hear your theory. I don't think Matthew was Sir Roderick's only son. You don't? You read Sir Roderick's diary. He makes references to some monster he helped create, and he doesn't mean Matthew. And Matthew talks about another boy in the house, a boy behind the kitchen door. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, wow, okay. That's totally right. Those manacles indicate that someone was kept imprisoned in the basement. Where do you think this other son came from? I want to hear what you think first. Hmm. Alright, gave birth to twins. A love child from Africa. Had an affair. Alright, so it seems like if you say, I don't know, what do you think? She just gives you the right answer, pretty much. So again, I wonder what happens if you say the wrong answer. Maybe she just says, you're an idiot. Here's what actually happened. Twins. I know she died in childbirth. Do I have any reason to believe she had twins? Not that I remember, but again, my memory's terrible, obviously. So. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Twins? I agree with that. Oh, okay. I found Belinda's death certificate. She died about 20 minutes after Matthew was already out. I think it was the second son that did her in. Sir Roderick went practically insane with grief. Blamed the poor kid for her death. Kept him locked in the basement. Refused to even acknowledge his existence. Can you imagine what that must have been like for the boy? Growing up in a filthy grotto like some kind of animal, given no education, no love? The boy would be completely retarded and insane. He probably wouldn't, couldn't tell the difference between one person and another. And that's why he kills absolutely everyone who enters the house. He thinks they're all Sir Roderick, come to torment him some more. But what happened on that day 15 years later, when Sir Roderick and Matthew disappeared? He found their corpses in the basement, so they were obviously murdered. Question is, how and why? Hmm. The other boy managed to escape from the basement, possible. Sir Roderick went mad and tried to kill him. Maybe someone found out about him and killed Sir Roderick out of sympathy. I doubt that. Hmm.
That's one of the first two ones. Wait, didn't he go mad? Wasn't he talking about how he's going to kill him? In his diary? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said that. Yeah, he went mad at trying to kill him. <laughs> yes. Remember in Sir Roderick's diary in the last entry? He talks about destroying the monster. He must have gotten really drunk in it, and it being the anniversary of Belinda's death didn't help. He went down to the basement and beat the poor kid to death. Half to death. And Matthew found the body afterwards and tried to bandage him up. Matthew wasn't the sharpest tool in the box. His brother lived on for a bit longer. Long enough to get a mask and machete and to kill both his father and Matthew. And then he must have just died of his wounds. Jesus. And we're going to try to destroy his ghost? And if anything that happened to him is his own fault. What little mind he had is no more. All he has now is hate. If we don't kill him, he'll kill us all. There's no reasoning with him. I suppose you're right. It's very sad, really. What will you do now? I'm going to find his body. Then I'm going to figure out how to bring his soul back to it and destroy him. Well, let me know if I can be of any help. I will. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, Simone, considering what's happened, I would suggest we should all stay together, but okay. To each of their own. Okay. So, step one is find his body. How in the hell do I find his body? Okay, um... The library one more time? Just in case. Oh, There must be something about summoning angry spirits in here. Of course. What house doesn't have any books about summoning angry spirits? Now, summoning happy spirits, that's a bit more rare. Okay, I think that's it. Black magic book, which is so black that it fades into the inventory system. The arts of black magic and necromancy. Summoning angry spirits to their bodies. Murderous rates are nigh indestructible when they can hop from body to body. But tying them down to their old bodies returns them to partial mortality, a state in which they can be destroyed. Simply enough, place the spirit's original body in a place of fire and death. Return it its old clothes, then read aloud the following passage, omitting nothing. There's just a load of magic gobbledygook here. When I want to read it out, I would use this book on myself. Warning, the summoning of a wraith will often bring forth other unquiet spirits who will haunt those who hold their possessions. Okay, I read that in like a comedy voice, but I maybe I should actually pay attention to that. Other spirits. Who will hunt those who hold their possessions. Okay. Wonderful. Doesn't actually help me find the body, though. Okay, well, I obviously have the Book of White Magic for a reason, so I'm sure I need to use it again. Okay, so I need one of their possessions. Where would I find one of the one of their possessions? Should I go back to the bathroom? Or, like, pick up the machete? Where did we put AJ? I'm 
I'm guessing I need to go find AJ and pick up one of his things, maybe? Wait a minute, where did the painting go? It's a blank canvas. Okay. Just gonna check every room just in case. Doesn't hurt to be thorough, of course. Oh. Did, oh, did I say AJ? I meant to say Jim. <laughs> I don't think Jim was the one. Uh, AJ was the one that tried to kill us. He was kind of dead at the time. Mr. Trilby? Yes, Jim? Can I ask you a favor? Sure. I still have the mask and the apron and the knife from last night. Could you take them and throw them away for me? I really don't like having them around. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. No, thank you, Jim. Yes. How are you feeling? My head still hurts a bit. And I feel a bit woozy. Apart from that, I'm fine. Okay, so what happened last night exactly? Well, me and Miss Taylor were in the living room. Then this big man entered in a mask and tried to kill us with a big knife. We were able to get away, but... <clears throat> then we heard Miss Hardy, Mr. Hardy screaming. Miss Taylor told me to wait here. A bit later, she came back and told me that it was you in the mask. I didn't really believe that. She went off to keep guard or something. Then I went into the trophy room and found this wooden doll thing on the floor. Next thing I remember, I was in the bathroom and my head really hurt. Did I really try to kill you? No. But something did. Through you. I don't like this place anymore, Mr. Trilby. You and me both. Okay. Well, I certainly have enough stuff for personal possessions. More than enough. Alright, I need to connect it to a... St Wait a minute, I don't have the stick anymore, do I? I don't. Hmm. Hmm. Gotta put these things on somewhere. Maybe I should go to the salt. Try to use any one of these, maybe? I don't think this is going to work. No. It's an ordinary old-fashioned wedding mask. <laughs> wedding mask. <laughs> wedding mask. Can you imagine if people wore those to a wedding? That would be interesting. Welding mask spotted with blood. A blacksmith's, blacksmith's leather apron. The machete's absolutely coated in crimson. Okay, well I have possessions for the black magic. I feel like I need to pick something up. Like a tool. I mean, I need a personal object. I think the most, the most personal of objects would be the manacles. Or the chains or something like that. I mean, that's where he lived most of his life, right? Are these manacles? What the hell is, oh yeah, he's already read that. 
quite firmly attached to the wall. Okay, can I solve that? With a crimson machete? No. With lock picks? I don't think it's locked. I think it's just screwed in or whatever. Why do I still have the teddy bear? That is really bizarre. Maybe that's gonna summon. Maybe that's gonna summon his uh his brother's ghost too. Based on the warning in the black magic book, coming back for his possessions. I think I'm about to sneeze. Also, I don't know what the hell to do. Like, I get some avenues of what to do. I have I have a bunch of possessions related to the <clears throat> the black magic book. I still have the white magic book, so obviously I'm supposed to do the salt thing and use that to figure out where his body is. But I don't exactly know how to tie this all together. I don't have a stick anymore. Which is a bit of a problem. Let's see if anything's changed over here. I doubt it. Yeah, tie possession to a stick. I don't have a stick, nor do I have anything to tie anything with. Place the original body in a place of fire and death. That'd be the room with a gun, right? Doesn't that place have a fire? I think it's the only place with a fire. Hmm. I don't know. Again, there's various avenues that I know. Like, I know kind of what to do. I'm just not exactly entirely sure how to d <clears throat> how to do it. I did not mean to close that. Ah, still no food. Terrible service in this place. Yeah, I give this hotel one out of five stars. Would not recommend staying. Way overpriced. No food, plus somebody tries to murder you every night. Hmm. 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 Wait, 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 what the f- Oh, look at that. Oh, what is that? It's about four pixels I can click on. Oh, old adventure games. Ah, filled with such bullshit. It's okay, I love you anyway. Pixel hunt crap and, and all. It's okay. Wait, let, me, let me find the pixel. Where's the pixel? There's the pixel. Thank you. Simone? Trilby? How are you feeling? I feel a lot better once we get out of this madhouse. Okay, bye. Alright, that can be used to cut the bear? No. Cut the apron? No. Oh yes, cut it then strip. Okay, so now I have something to bind it, but I don't have a stick. Let me just check in here again. Moosehead. Yeah, this is definitely the room of fire and death. I mean, there's a fire and, well, I'm surrounded by death. Heads. Those antlers look like they could maybe be used as a stick. The antlers wouldn't fit inside my blazer. 
Can I cut off antlers with scissors? I don't think scissors are that good. No. Oh, I'm not even using the right item. Let's try that again. No, that's stupid. Machete. That wouldn't work. Seriously, you need, like... You need a saw of some sort. No doubt about it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Machete plus strip. Maybe that works as a stick? I, I don't know. No. Oh. Mask plus machete. Okay. I think I'm ready for some salt dipping. Yeah. I've been waiting the whole game for some salt dipping. Ever since I saw that bag of salt, I'm like... Yeah, I want to dip in that salt. Now my dream has finally come true. Excuse me, Philip. I'm just going to dip my uh, mask and machete into some salt next to your body. Excuse me. Okay. And then I think I would wave it over... Well, it's where you sleep, which would be here. I guess this must be where you slept if he was chained to these all the time. Yep. <sighs> it's depressing, isn't it? Just imagine how f just horribly messed up that kid would be. God. Alright, where do I go? Upwards. Okay. Wait a minute, his body's upwards? What the... How? So his body's not buried in the ground. Obviously there's no dirt above me. To my right. To my right. In, in here? Southwest. What the hell? Underneath the tiles? In the bathroom? Okay. Can't get them out with my bare hands. Fair enough. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I don't think scissors are gonna... Oh my god, I can't believe I was just about to say that. I swear this was not an intended pun, but I was about to say, I don't think scissors are going to cut it. Yes. I'm sorry. I seriously didn't mean that as a pun. Nope, scissors don't cut tiles. Today I learned... The machete might work to pry it up? If it wasn't tied to a mask? Solution achieved! I do need a machete. I just need to cut it. Bingo! Ah! Oh, old adventure game interfaces. Why couldn't I just untie it? That didn't need to be complicated. Sorry, I was zoning out for a second looking at something else. That's why I just tried to use the machete on the rug. There we go, I can lever up the floor with the boom shit. Mm -hmm. Pay dirt. Whoa, these bones are pretty oddly shaped. I think this kid must have been born deformed. Well, that would reinforce why he calls him a monster. 
It's probably for more than just one reason, though. Partially because he's deformed, and partially because he... Well, I didn't... I guess... I don't know. He kind of killed his wife, Roderick's wife. Not really. You are coming with me. Nope, down, downstairs, Trilby. Down, Trilby. Trilby. There you go. No, no. Yes. Simone, would you like to see my demon summoning? I mean, spirit summoning. That's totally not going to cause me to die. Okay. <laughs> Those remains really don't look like bones. Not entirely sure what it does look like. Hmm. Yeah, maybe like a pile of partially melted butter? Okay. Alright, place it here. Return it its old clothes. I can have to do that. But for now, let's put it on the floor. I guess this would count as a room of fire and death. Yes. Ooh. Finally, something other than silence. Would this be its old clothes? The apron? Somehow I don't think I've improved his looks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's definitely time to save it. Because I think the next thing I'm going to do is summon the spirit. And it's coincidentally happening in a room with a gun. Which is suggestive of what I'm going to have to do next. Well, obviously I know I'm trying to kill him, so... Not so much suggestive as just plain obvious. Nip, close, and then read the following passage aloud. So I need to use it on myself. I think he, I think he said. Here we go. Here goes nothing. In this hall of death, and by the light of Prometheus's gift, I call thee. Oh. I bring thee gifts that may tempt thee back. I bring thee thy helm, that thy would be masked. I bring thee thy armor, that thy would be clothed. I bring thee thy sword, that thy would be armed. Come. 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 Hi. Uh, maybe I could have planned this better. <laughs> you might have wanted to have the gun in your hands before doing this, I suppose. Yeah. And by you should have, I mean I should have. <laughs> Let's, um, try this again. Wait. Wait, can I even do that? I... God, there you go. It doesn't appear I can move. I can't move and I can't open my inventory. It's heavy, I need to put it down somewhere. Okay, can I... It's not that freaking heavy. The thing doesn't weigh 50 pounds. Jesus. It, when your life is at stake, you think you could hold it? Rest it up against the wall? I, I don't know. I don't even know if this thing's... Actually, is this thing even loaded? I don't believe he's ever mentioned. Do I need the other's help? He's obviously planning. It's something I need to do before I summon the spirit. Hmm. Could you meet me in the trophy room? 
You have a plan? Yes, I've got a plan. Okay, then. I don't have a plan. She's gonna die. See if Jim wants to join us. The show is about to begin. Wouldn't want to miss it, Jim. Come watch, Jim. Why? I have a plan. Well, okay. I still don't have a plan. Well, of course, my plan is to try to use the gun, but again, I, I don't even know if it's loaded. I found it hard to believe somebody would keep a loaded gun. When it appears to be ornamental. Like, why would you load an ornamental gun? I haven't seen any black powder around, though, or whatever the hell it uses, uses, so... Don't think I'm gonna be loading it. Hi. Your save directory is full. Hmm, okay. Can, can I, I can't even scroll. I'll replace one. Actually... No. Let's replace 20. Because I have a feeling I'm going to have to reload it. Uh, can I give the gun to one of them? Is this like a, a choice? I have to choose which one I want to give it to or something? I, I don't know. Jim? Or... Oh, apparently I can't give it to Jim. Could you hold on to this for me, Simone? Is this part of the plan? Or do you just get a kick out of seeing women with big guns? Maybe both. Please, Simone. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, the music's suddenly very quiet again. Here we go. Jesus Christ! What now? Trilby, what now? Uh, shoot it? Maybe I could have planned this, but what? Uh, just, is it loaded or not? Right? Well, I'm most of the way there, apparently. The fuck? How do I destroy him? Mm hmm. Okay, that doesn't help at all about how to kill a spirit. Can you not just shoot it? I don't know. Having the faintest freaking clue. There's really nothing else I could grab, is there? I don't know, can can I give Jim the bag of salt and have him like fling salt at it? Will that do something? Salt seems to be used in these magics. Do we give him the teddy bear? I do I give him the teddy bear? Could you on, hold on to this for me, Jim? Whatever you say. Oh wait, is Will often bring forth other unquiet spirits who will haunt, uh, who will hunt those who hold their possessions. Okay. Why would giving him the teddy bear help anything, though? This is bizarre. Okay. <laughs> Does this do it?
Jesus Christ, what now? Trilby, what? Oh, this is the same thing. Should have planned this better. Wait, 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 what? Oh. I knew you were evil from the moment you came into this world, demon child. It's actually working. May God forgive me for having a part in your creation. Why did you kill me, brother? I helped you when you were injured. I bandaged you when our father made his mistake. No mistake, young one. Now do you see why I tried to keep you away from this creature? It has no understanding of human ways. You're wrong, father. You'd have even given him a chance to be... If you'd even given him a chance to be normal. Cease your prattling, Matthew. It's time to put an end to the horror I unleashed. What are you doing, father? Father, no! Father! I think now would be a good time to take our leave. Oh, damn. Okay. Miss Taylor, over here. What the hell's been going on in there? We've been trying to get in there for hours, and suddenly the place catches fire, the doors burst open, and you two... Us two? Where's Trilby? I thought he was right behind us. You're saying there's someone else in there? Trilby! Trilby! Wait a second. Trilby the cat burglar? Yes. Get someone in there. He could be in trouble. Maybe the ghost got him. Ghost? <sighs> I think we'd better get I think we'd better get you two down to the station. But Trilby. The fire brigade will find him if he's there. In the meantime, if you'd like to step this way. Death, of course, comes to us all. It came to Sir Roderick Defoe and his youngest son in the shape of each other. Was destroying the ghost the right thing to do? It was acting like any other dumb animal. Oh well. I guess he and his family will have plenty of time to discuss it. Wherever they are. As for me, well, I have no complaints. I've lived a life I've lived a life many would consider out of the ordinary. And I have only one regret. Leaving Simone and Jim to explain it all to the police. That was hardly gentlemanly conduct for a gentleman thief. But I'm sure they'd understand that rushing out into a field full of police officers wouldn't have been a good idea. It's going to be a long walk home. And I have some important matters to attend to. I have to track down my fence, for one thing. Then I have to punch him very hard in the face. There we go. I wonder if they're going to think he died. If they think he died, that would actually be a good thing for him. For staying down low off everybody's radar if they think he's dead. Oh god, the game just shut down. Hold on. Let me bring it back up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the theme music to keep playing. There we go. So, yeah. If they think he's dead, that's obviously a good thing for him. If, they, if they're still not quite sure he's dead, well, at least he avoided having to explain everything to them. And avoided getting caught. Like, hey, Mr. Trilby. Why was a cat burglar inside of this mansion? That's ripe for the picking. Hmm. Wouldn't have been a good thing. Definitely not. Alright, so. Quick wrap up. My thoughts on the game. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely frustrating at times. It's unfortunately very, very classical in how it's designed as an adventure game. I mean, it's got. Let's load up a game here. I mean, it's got the. What do you even call these? Are these, like, called the verbs? Walk, look, use, talk? I think they're... I think those are called verbs. 
that's a super, super old adventure game thing that, even, even though I've played a decent amount of adventure games, it's something I've almost never used. You know, usually it's nowadays, and for quite a while it's been context-sensitive stuff, so it's very strange to see something so classical as actually having to select walk and having to select use and stuff like that as distinct uh, cursor modes, basically. And it's really no wonder it's been replaced, because that's really clunky. Thankfully, there's actually... you can use the uh, F keys as shortcuts to the different modes. So even though I kept fumbling over them, at least it wasn't... at least I didn't have to, like, right-click and select a different mode or whatever, or click down here all the time. So it wasn't horrible, but yeah, definitely classical. But it's not just in the way you control it that it's classical, it's also in the uh, the puzzle design. But again, I really enjoyed it, despite that, even though it's very classical and I really don't like many things about classical adventure games. It's still re really enjoyable, and the reason for that is... It's really entirely down to the writing, I think. I mean, it's, it's a pretty old game, you know, it doesn't control well, it doesn't look very good at all. The music isn't very good, it's an incredibly inconsistent, but it's got one thing about it that's really strong. And it carries it through, and that's the writing. It's great. It's really good. There's tons of detail on everything. Oh, look, the music just got quiet again. Bye, music. I'll see you later when you decide to get loud again. Yeah, there's just so much text with how you interact with everything. Try to use it. You know, there's a description. Line's dead. Somehow I was expecting that. Then there's the look at it one. Hit ordinary telephone. Perhaps this could be my ticket out of here. Or you can talk to it. It won't answer me. Not even the answering machine will answer you. Actually, it probably doesn't have an answering machine. It's too old. But yeah, there's just an incredible amount of of interesting and cleverly written text about anything you can interact with. It's really richly, richly detailed world. It makes it, for the most part, a joy to click on stuff, except when it involves clicking on stuff like pixel hunting for puzzles, but when you're just exploring the world, it's really fun to click on stuff, because I know that when I try to use something, there's going to be a unique... A unique bit of text. Something clever or funny or interesting. Or just something that builds on the world and makes it feel lived in and real. And same with the character dialogue. Character dialogue is really well written and the uh, <clears throat> the just the story is just it's kind of like a page turner which is a weird analogy to use for a game that doesn't have pages but it's kind of the same idea as that in the sense that it's like a thriller type thing and you really want to know what happens next and there's always a mystery. You know, like, uh, is there a way out of here? And who are these other people? How did they get here? Uh, where's the body? How do I exercise the, uh, the spirits? How do I... That sort of stuff. There's like always something driving you forward. It's always clear what you need to do next in, in story terms for the most part. <laughs> With some exceptions with some puzzly things where it's like, oh, what do I do next? I click on a bunch of books until something happens? Okay. But aside from that, yeah, there's just a really, it's just a really strong story that always keeps moving forwards and there's always something interesting around the corner and something I want to know more about. And that's what carried it through. And I think it's really a testament to the writing that... That itself actually makes me really enjoy the game. Because again, I didn't really enjoy anything else about it. Like, it's not very good looking. It doesn't sound very good. It doesn't control well. I don't like most of the puzzle design. But despite the fact that I don't really like much of anything except for the writing. The writing is so strong that I really enjoyed it. So damn good writing. Oh, music's loud again. Yeah, and there are four other parts in this, in the Chozo Mythos, or however you pronounce it. Four more parts, the Trilby story, which apparently do not happen chronologically. If you play them in order of release, which I'm going to, the story actually does not happen chronologically, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with that. Um, I know that they were made, I think, years apart. Like the first, from the first game to this, the last game, there's a pretty big difference in time. So I imagine I'm probably going to see differences in 
art styles and how you control the character and stuff. It's probably gonna it's gonna be really interesting to see how this series evolves graphically and design wise and all of that. Yeah. And I know that two of the games... Is it the second and the third, or the third and the fourth? I don't know. But I believe it's two of the games actually use a... What's it called? It's the type of thing where you, like, type in text to make stuff happen. I don't know what that's called, because I've almost never done it. So it's going to be a lot of interesting things to see in the series in terms of just where they go design-wise. And of course, I'm obviously still very interested in the story as well. What's going to happen next? I don't know. This this seems to be a self-contained story, so I wonder if the next thing is going to be an entirely different story, or if it's going to be somehow connected. Is it still going to be supernatural, like this was? I don't know. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Five Days a Stranger. And coming up, hopefully soonish, will be my playthrough of the next game, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. But yes, I'm certainly going to be playing the rest of the series. Thank you for watching.